Your Excellency, I will seek your indulgence uh, to speak slightly longer than my colleagues, uh, because I think today is an extremely important day uh, for the entire public service and for Kenya in regard to service delivery. So here are my remarks. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this important occasion for the official release of the 18th cycle report on evaluation of the performance of ministries, state corporations, and tertiary institutions for the financial year 2021-2022. I really emphasize that, 2021-2022. Please underscore that because the new government has just stepped in, so the results that you are seeing is because government is in perpetuity and we are releasing the results as they were in that financial year. Your Excellency, the Kenya Vision 2030 guides the development of a robust, well-functioning, citizen-focused and result-oriented public service as a key foundation for economic growth. To this end, your government is committed to facilitating creation of an environment that fosters Kenya's transformation process as envisaged in the bottom-up transformation agenda, in short, better, and the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto. This will be done by sustaining the upscaling of gains made through the deepening of devolution, public sector reforms, and enhanced infrastructure development to spur socioeconomic development. Your Excellency, performance contracting has increasingly become an important tool for improving public sector performance. If implemented well, it is an instrument that should assist the country achieve its long-term economic development policy goals. To this extent, performance contracting has been embedded in the public service for 19 years now and codified through the Public Service Commission performance management regulations of 2021 as a means of managing performance in the public service. Your Excellency, the first level performance contracts are signed annually in tandem with the government's budgeting cycle between yourself and the respective cabinet secretary, after which they are cascaded to downstream institutions. So in a few weeks' time, we shall be signing uh, performance contracts with you. Your Excellency, whereas implementation of performance contracting has been on course, its potential is yet to be fully realized. Hence, we are now committing to enhance linkage of performance contracting to key performance indicators contained in the program-based budget under implementation by MDS. Your Excellency, the role of public servants is to facilitate government to implement its policies, programs, and deliver services to an NG on a value-for-money basis. Consequently, performance targets must advance the country's development agenda. For this reason, and through Your Excellency, I direct that the performance contracts for cabinet secretaries be aligned to the key government priorities as contained in the program-based budget and cascaded downwards to ensure that all public servants are working towards the common good of the country. Invariably, performance of the public service must then be integral in driving the bottom-up economic transformation agenda as an offshoot in realizing the Kenya Vision 2030 that seeks to transform Kenya into a globally competitive, prosperous country. But, and I say but, we are seven years short of the expiry of Kenya Vision 2030. A conversation around Kenya's vision 2063, when Kenya turns 100 years old, must begin. 
Meanwhile, the rallying call in performance contracting, as Aisha has said, is what gets measured gets done. Adoption of performance contracts ought to establish uniformity, consistency, and objectivity in measuring public service performance. Hence, its implementation must henceforth fast track the linkage between planning and budgeting phases to clear outputs and outcomes. Your Excellency, upon implementation of performance contracts in the public service in 2004, economic growth rose to a record 7.1% in 2007 from 0.6% in 2002. This is evidence that a robust performance management system results in efficiency and productivity in the public service leading to economic growth. Indeed, in 2007, Kenya won the coveted United Nations Public Service Award for transparency, accountability, and responsiveness in service delivery. In June 2021, the country won the second runners-up award for best innovation in citizen-centered service delivery at the 8th All Africa Public Service Day held in Zimbabwe. As a result, African countries such as Botswana, Malawi, Sierra Leone, and Lesotho have domesticated the Kenyan model of performance contracting in the management of their public service. Performance management the world over has been evolving, and I am informed the same reengineering is taking place in Kenya. First, I am informed that in 2020, the Public Service Performance Management Unit commenced automation of the performance contracting processes that were previously carried out manually. This is being done through a fully homegrown online government performance contracting information system. The ultimate goal of this system is a fully automated end-to-end -end system where all relevant performance contracting processes are carried out online. It is worth pointing out that the system ensured continuity of service delivery during the challenging COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, the GPCIS should be emulated by other public institutions in their efforts to automate service delivery. Secondly, the Kenya Integrated Performance Management Policy was developed. The policy provides for the principles, strategies, and broad guidelines for performance management in the national and county governments, constitutional commissions, and independent offices while taking cognizance of their autonomy. Its rollout will engineer, re-engineer the organizational, operational, and institutional framework for guiding performance management services in Kenya's public service. Thirdly, my office is in the process of developing a public service performance management bill, which will be the overarching law to fully anchor the performance management function in the entire public service institutions at both levels of government. Your Excellency, what we have is a situation where just the regulations are used and some departments have always opted out of performance contracting. We want to have a law that ensures that everybody is captured and nobody is exempt. It will result in value for money from public investments through adoption, streamlining, and unifying norms of whole of government approach and provide a framework for rewarding performance and sanctioning non-performance. Your Excellency, the report that you will be releasing today contains the results of ministries, state corporations, and tertiary institutions against the performance targets that they committed to achieve in the last financial year. But in the subsequent financial years, the focus of the performance contracts will be based on, among others, the priorities agreed during the cabinet retreat held at the beginning of this year in Nanyuki, chaired by yourself. In order to realize this, all public institutions must ensure 
that their respective key priorities are included in their performance contracts. Your Excellency, one of the internationally accepted performance management principles is accountability and transparency of a government performance management system, which means providing factual feedback about the performance of government. Therefore, the annual performance evaluation and release of the report for the financial year 2021-2022 marks a momentous occasion since it provides the baseline for performance commitments in the next financial year and also some reflection. Allow me, therefore, to reflect on a matter that should not escape our collective attention. Your Excellency, just before Easter, the Public Service Commission 2021-2022 annual report indicts ministries, departments, and agencies for incurring colossal financial penalties through court awards because of failure to honor contractual obligations. The Public Service Commission reveals that most losses are occasioned when state entities enter into contracts without adequate budgeted and approved funding. Common breach of contracts begs the questions. Do frequent breaches of contracts arise out of inept due diligence or sheer negligence by MDAs? Do staff in procuring entities understand procurement laws and that it, it is their responsibility to ensure contractors fulfill their obligations and that government receives the goods and services it paid for? Or should we conclude they know the rules but choose to ignore them for a benefit? The legal framework for public procurement is set out in Article 227 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. And in several sections of the Public Finance Management Act, number 18 of 2012, and the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act of 2015, Your Excellency, public resources are not infinite. Constant losses cannot be entertained. Under Section 44 of Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act of 2015, accounting officers take responsibility for failure to ensure procurement is within approved budgets and procurement plans. Indeed, that section requires compliance with the provisions of Section 68 of the Financial Management Act. Compliance with the law is therefore not optional. Section 79 of the Act makes it mandatory for public officers to comply with laws reg regulating public procurement. We cannot condone laxity wastage and losses anymore. It is time to strictly apply the penalties accruing from Section 72, accounting officers failing to manage public assets to achieve value for money will henceforth be penalized. The same applies to application of Section 74.4, public officers who breach accounting responsibility by making or permitting expenditure that is unlawful will be surcharged. I have deliberately highlighted these issues because they are at the center of perennial loss of resources arising from lost cases in courts of law. Going forward, we will soon address these deficiencies and make officers more accountable. Your Excellency, in order to fulfill the commitments made to our people, it is paramount that the whole public to practice the tried and time-tested result-based performance management tool. To ensure that this is done, my office will ensure compliance with the annual performance contracting cycle timelines. This is besides holding quarterly meetings with principal secretaries to monitor achievements of agreed performance targets. In this context, a motivated human service resource remains core to performance management and service delivery. 
In order to promote productivity, innovation, and creativity in public service, youth and personnel living with disabilities require to be motivated. My office is developing a framework for an under 35 Employee of the Year Annual Award for this category of public officers. The award may be in the form of promotion and scholarships for such employees who demonstrate commitment and excellence in performance, innovation, and creativity that translates to effective public service delivery. This award will also enhance the visibility of target employees who exhibit high leadership growth potential across the public service. In conclusion, I do recognize the support and contributions of all our partners and collaborators in ensuring the institutionalization of performance management in the public service. Asante ni sana. It was a bit long, but I thought I had to convey this message.